This might be the greatest secret Stone Age has to reveal. Instead of random stones being assembled, Stone Age contains a deeper message, a message that is guaranteed to blow your mind. In the late 1900s, after exploring and measuring hundreds of ancient megalithic sites across Great Britain, Professor Alexander Thaw made a groundbreaking discovery. He found a long forgotten intricate measurement system that the ancient builders were using. He called the units megalithic units, such as megalithic yard or megalithic or long foot. One long foot equals 1.056 modern feet, which is a very interesting number. Let me show you why. Do you know how many modern feet are in a mile? Well, the word mile comes from mile, meaning a thousand. One thousand Roman paces constitute a mile. One pace is further divided into 5.28 feet. Therefore, one imperial mile has 5,280 feet. Do you notice anything in relation to the numbers 5.28 and 1.056? Multiply 1.056 by 5 and you get 5.28. In other words, what this means is that one modern mile corresponds exactly to 5,000 megalithic feet. Could there be a connection between the ancient measurement system and our modern one? First, let's take a closer look at this 1.056 ratio, because it shows up at more unexpected places at Stonehenge. For example, the lengths of the lintels at Stonehenge, the horizontal stones that bridge the vertical stones at Stonehenge, which are measured to be also 10.56 feet. Not only that, but also the diameter of the Sarsen stone circle, which is the diameter of Stonehenge measured all the way to its outer edges, is measured to be 105.6 feet. As explained in the previous video, since 105.6 times 50 equals 5280, which is the amount of modern feet in a modern mile, that means that the diameter of Stonehenge is exactly 1 50th of a modern mile. How can this be? Is the imperial system a continuation of the ancient system? If that's the case, why would there be a connection, you may ask? After all, aren't measurements just arbitrary? What if I told you that these measurements may be vehicles to a much more advanced knowledge than you could even imagine? Let's look at the most obvious measurements of the circles at Stonehenge. First, we have the so-called blue stone circle, which is the inner circle of Stonehenge, which measures 39.6 feet for its radius, or 79.2 feet for its diameter. Then we can measure Stonehenge to the outer circle, but to the center line. Then we get 100.8 feet as a diameter with a radius of 50.4 feet. And then we have the outer Sarsen stone circle with a diameter of 105.6 feet. Now, did some of these values look familiar to you? Here's a hint. Look at the blue stone circle. It just so happens that the numbers 39.6 and 79.2 correspond exactly to the measurements of planet Earth, expressed in miles. The radius and diameter of the Earth are 3960 miles and 7920 miles, respectively. Now, if we take this one step further and we pay attention to the difference between the diameter to the outer center line and the diameter to the inner blue stone circle, we get a value of 10.8 feet. Can you guess what the number 10.8 could represent? The moon. Expressed in miles, the moon's radius happens to be 1080 miles. Its diameter happens to be 2160 miles. That means the ratio of Stonehenge's inner and outer circles provide us with the ratio of Earth and Moon. This whole geometry isn't just an arbitrary ratio, it is born from the geometrical marriage of heaven and earth, the square of the circle. Does this geometrical problem contain the secret to the universe? This is the squaring of the circle problem. It was one of the preeminent geometric problems of the ancient world. The problem goes as follows. Using only a compass and an unmarked straight edge, how do you create a circle with the same circumference as the perimeter of a given square? Spoiler, it is not possible due to the transcendental nature of pi. It is only possible to approximate a solution, but a perfect congruency will never be possible. The square represents the finite, the rational or the terrestrial. The circle represents the infinite, irrational or celestial. The problem stands for the attempted harmonization of two irreconcilable forces of nature, in other words, the marriage of heaven and earth. But why talk about this? Because some scholars say it may contain the code for the architecture of creation. What do I mean by that? Imagine you have a square. Now, we add a triangle with exactly these proportions relative to the square. If we overlay the triangle onto the square so that the triangle space stands on the center of the square, like this, we will get this pattern. As you can see, there is a small overlap between the square and the triangle. If we use the height of this triangle as a radius to draw a circle, we will find that this new circle will have the same circumference as the square's perimeter, therefore providing a solution to the squaring of the circle problem. Now. If you paid attention earlier, you will notice that the ratio of Stonehenge's blue stone circle and the Sarsen stone circle, measured from the center of the stones, makes the metaphysical marriage of heaven and earth possible. Not only that, it also contains the ratio of earth and moon in it, making it the ultimate example of sacred geometry. Stonehenge is not the only building containing these proportions. The Great Pyramid actually also references the same problem, but that is a topic for another video. 
So if we read Stonehenge through its dimensions and its proportions, we will understand that the builders may have outlined their vision of the cosmos, one might even dare to call it knowledge of the architecture of creation. If we don't believe that this is coincidence, we'll have to admit that somebody was here who understood the proportions of our solar system and perhaps beyond on a very high level. If you want to support this channel, check out the new official Metanoia store. Thank you.